पेपर एज नियर सर्फेस जियो फिजिक्स एंड फॉर रिचिंग एप्लीकेशन रिसेंट सक्सेस स्टोरी फ्रॉम चेनामपल्ली फोर्ट एरिया कुरनोल डिस्ट्रिक्ट मिस्टर चेयरमैन सर एंड फ्रेंड्स आई एम नॉट एन इंजीनियरिंग जियो फिजिसिस्ट आई एम एन एक्सप्लोरेशन मैन बट इट्स अ रेयर अपॉर्चुनिटी दैट आई हैव गॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर विथ यू ऑन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ वेरी नॉलेजबल इंजीनियरिंग जियो साइंटिस्ट in fact i thought any branch of science would grow when there is necessity and when there is demand why engineering geophysics is not grown to the extent uh, uh, oil exploration or mineral exploration or for that matter groundwater exploration has happened is probably there is no uh, that demand that systematic demand and probably that is the reason why in geological survey of india we have not uh, created any specific division to cater to the needs of uh, engineering geophysics uh, in fact uh, two two case histories that have uh, been carried out by geological survey of india come to my mind um, i will, one of them is my topic this is the fort and both are very peculiar problems one problem was in a border area our neighboring country was trying to infiltrate into our country most of you from northern india probably are aware uh, they were trying to infiltrate into our land mass by digging a tunnel and geophysical technology along with other uh, branches of science were uh, very effectively deployed and that could be uh, very ably uh, that problem could be very ably in the nipping stage itself it could be solved uh, this one of my friend from northern india he has shared who has uh, really worked in that uh, heavy secured environment very peculiar problem the other one is uh, topic of my presentation that is uh, treasure hunting and government was involved in it i mean uh, honestly speaking uh, uh, i was very reluctant uh, i mean why should we be doing any treasure hunting uh, but then better senses prevailed and our director general insisted that uh, we should uh, try and see what can be done because uh, at a very high level government of andhra pradesh was requesting uh, government of india uh, and this is a very peculiar problem in fact i don't know how far uh, you would appreciate this that is topic of my presentation uh, may i have the next slide please yeah this is uh, in uh, andhra pradesh in karnool district there are number of forts ruins uh, they are all built around uh, 1400 to 1600 uh, end of krishnadeva empire uh, krishnadeva empire a very very uh, very strong uh, kingdom Uh, during those days and very rich kingdom very great heritage etc and wherever they ruled they built number of uh, forts for some of them for their uh, safety aspects not for uh, uh, residential purposes and uh, during the end of that regime uh, people strongly believed in those areas that uh, lot of treasure is uh, hidden i mean uh, concealed in some places high value and that has to be a, uh, you know there is a lot of law and order problem many people were involved uh, unlawful elements uh, very um, rowdy kind of things and then people were digging at their uh, own will etc and then uh, government of andhra pradesh wanted to uh, involve gsi into say categorically whether there is a need treasure or not and tell openly to the public that there is something and there is nothing yeah and that opportunity what we got is uh, my presentation and the blue line in the right one what you see is the uh, fort which is uh, totally in ruins now next one please now geophysics is basically two kinds one is passive other is active that is you are it is like uh, Uh, source and response studies you energize either uh, uh, not with your intention like gravity field or magnetic field and see how the geological units are responding to them or 
the other method is uh, the active method where you, you have the control and you can uh, energize the ground and get response out of it and try to uh, convert them into geological units. Both these methods were employed here. In fact, we had no other goal. We wanted to find out um, in an open land, uh, which is uh, highly um, hilly and you know very rugged terrain, etc., what anything can be hidden. So what we thought is we wanted to find out where are the weak zones. That was our uh, first line of thought. So we tried to identify any fractures. Uh, for that purpose, we did uh, next slide, please. Yeah, for for that purpose, we did uh, the magnetic survey, and the next one is obviously the high precise uh, GPR surveys to actually locate them. And GPR cannot be done over uh, some three square kilometer or four square kilometer area. I mean, there has to be some prioritization. Only on prioritized areas you can concentrate these methods. For that purpose, we did, uh, but magnetic survey, what we did is, uh, we did in a continuous mode. That is every one meter, two meters. Nowadays, you have the facility, you can just walk in a walk mode with a magnetometer. You, it's like airborne data collection. On surface, you can do uh, with five meters. So we did um, excellent magnetic survey. We filled the entire uh, fort area with a magnetic survey to prioritize where to do the next level of survey. Yeah, and uh, may, uh, can you go back? The GPR survey, most of you know the principle. Uh, it is the, in the, in the high frequency ranges, this technique is used. It's like any other electromagnetic technique. One advantage is, uh, it is not bothered by the nature of the overburden. The CUT method is constrained by the nature of the overburden, which will either allow, or sometimes it doesn't allow the energy to go into, to get the information. But GPR doesn't suffer. But only problem GPR is is highly localized survey. That is, only the upper layers you get the in information about it. Yeah, there is varied uh, frequency ranges. You can choose uh, the frequency in which you want to do. The higher the frequency, uh, the local, is, the nearer the is the object. And the low frequency of these uh, high frequencies, you can target for something deeper. Anyway, uh, let us say from 0.5 meters to maybe 30 meters, you can get the information from uh, ground penetrating radar. And you can see if there is a, uh, a boundary, uh, it nicely reflects, it's a very theoretical pictorial diagram. But if there is any void space like the point reflector, what you see in the center, uh, it, you get a hyperbolic uh, response. So this is how you try to identify whether it is an artificial uh, object or a natural boundary. And that's how from the GPR survey, you decide what it is in the subsurface and the frequency ranges generally what are the other engineering, uh, I mean, what are the specific engineering applications you want to target depending on that, uh, you choose the frequency. Okay, next one please. Yeah, and this is the electromagnetic spectrum, very well known electromagnetic spectrum. In GPR, we concentrate on the high frequency, uh, ultra high frequency and very high frequency ranges. We, we uh, choose that energy to energize the ground and get the response. And you know the, uh, how uh, the energy interacts with the geological medium. And that response is studied and uh, converted into it. Uh, next one, please. Yeah, there are many applications. Now I think it is, um, the doors are open, many, many uh, military intelligence, etc. Some strange uh, uh, demands are coming. Accordingly, uh, uh, GPR technique is used. Mainly in Geological Survey of India, we have been using uh, GPR surveys for our Antarctica studies because in an ice-covered medium to know the subsurface, that is the best method. It, it applies very effectively and you get the uh, information. Uh, other than the geological applications, yes, there are a number of archaeological uh, investigations that can be addressed. In fact, uh, the more specific is your problem, uh, the better would be your uh, survey design. That's what I felt. Yeah, next one, please. Now, this is the fort. The left one shows more or less the entire uh, picture of that fort, where anything can be hidden. So it is such an open place, yeah? Uh, and we were given this area, and within one week, we were to identify where could anything be uh, hidden there, uh, what would be our suggestion, etc. 
And the other right side picture is uh, what people were guided by is a, a picture of a series of ladies uh, standing there and pointing something, particularly the last two ladies. I don't know whether it is how far it is clear to you, but the last two ladies, ladies are showing a finger and probably people believe that something is hidden there, whatever their finger direction. So they did a lot of excavation there, nothing came out of it. But somehow this is the a guiding force for people to believe something is really there, something is really hidden and that has to be brought out. Yeah, this is it. Another unusual thing is normally f any fort will have bastions in a regular uh, interval, uh, the guarding uh, pillars. And somehow this fort looked to me very odd. I mean, why there are so high density bastions in this? Uh, yeah? Two minutes. Two minutes? Yes, sir, two minutes. Uh, maybe five minutes. Uh, why these uh, bastions are there uh, in such a high density? Next one, please. Yeah, this is the picture. This will give you a 360 degrees view of that fort. That is the bastion. And you can see this is the entire terrain is highly rugged, highly open. And I am really amazed that something could be hidden in that area. Yeah, this is how it is. <laughs> this is the terrain. This is what uh, is given to us. Yeah, may I have the next slide, please? <laughs> Yeah, this is the uh, how magnetic lines were possible and uh, those blue lines are the magnetic. Then based on that magnetic uh, investigation, this is the elevation map. The, the center one is the top of the hill on either side it is sloping, both north and south it is sloping. And we have, from the magnetic map, we have tried to identify the platforms where there is some gentleness about the slope, where something could be accumulated, such kind of platforms Four platforms we could identify based on the magnetic survey where there is some thin cover of soil, etc. That is what we could identify. Next one, please. Yeah, those platforms are marked one, two, three, four. And picture really, this is the, this is the platform four is not is there in the scene. It is something uh, southwards, further south. Yeah, next one, please. Yeah, then we did the magnetic map. Naturally, magnetic map at such a high density is very noisy. We couldn't uh, really, uh, it was very difficult for us to identify something. Then we applied a filter and we somehow reduced the noise and we tried to identify a fracture zone. And fracture zone is coinciding with the number of wells they are falling on that line. So we were sure that uh, uh, there is a, a fracture which is cutting across the uh, fort from that slope to this slope. And uh, in the center, uh, if you can see, yeah, this is the unusual anomaly. Otherwise, there's a low magnetic zone. Somehow we thought, why, why, we are very confident of our data because it's a high precision data. We, we have taken a lot of care in collecting the data. And that uh, anomaly, which is highly localized and standing out, uh, normally geological anomalies are not like that. So we thought that this anomaly is not a geological region, it is something unusual. So we were almost uh, keen that we should exploit that anomaly and uh, uh, do the next survey. Next one, please. Yeah, this is how GPR survey is done. This is again a pictorial, I mean, a, next one, please. Now, the, the joints would reflect in a GPR survey like this. Next one, please. And uh, these are the boulders, if they are embedded, they, they look like this in the platform, uh, one platform, side two, we have found out, the second, next one. In the third platform, uh, again, void space, you know, maybe a boulder is embedded in the soil cover, that's how it is doing. Then these are the fractures. Uh, based on our experience, we have tried to uh, uh, convert our uh, GPS signals into possible geological reasons. Next one. Um, this is the, then we narrowed down to this place. This place we thought, between one bastion here and another bastion here, this place I thought uh, was most suitable for something. Yeah, next one please. Then there when we conducted the GPS survey, we found out these chambers. So this chamber uh, is exposed. Yeah, and in continuation, not in this picture, in continuation of that we thought there are some more chambers which are now hidden under soil cover. On the first look, or any, any amount of surface observation would give you an idea that uh, uh, there is a possibility of a hidden chamber in that particular area. Next one. Uh, yeah, this is the last one, platform four, where we conducted, and what we got is only uh, joints uh, uh, in that place. Next one. 
Yeah, this is. When we, when, then they said, then we said this is our priority, one. And the government of AP started doing the operations and uh, they opened up and we have established that this kind of room which is exposed in the earlier picture, nothing is here. Uh, we could find out the parallel rooms now covered. Now,